now you you do a lot of teaching and you and you mm -hmm. do a lot of instructing with young screenwriters. What are the biggest mistakes you see uh, young screenwriters make? You know, really coming right out of the box, the biggest thing that I see is that they want to do something that is uh, not that is heartfelt, which is great, but not necessarily commercial. I think one of the things that a lot of young filmmakers forget is that films have to be producible. And that means several different things. It means one, there has to be a commercial angle. That doesn't mean it has to be, you know, X-Men or the Marvel universe, but what it does mean is it, it has to have a place in the industry. So for instance, um, if you're going to do something that's very interpersonal and very kind of, you know, small, you have to expect that you're going to have a budget and uh, contained enough that you can do it in a, on a very low budget that allows it to be uh, done on a, on a small scale and in, you know, art houses or directed to video. If you can't do that, um, then you've got to be able to get to the stars. And generally, the writer right out of the box, they're not going to have that access. Right. So my, my advice is, you know, look for something that, is absolutely personal and touches you, but find a way to couch it that is uh, that attracts a wide audience. Um, because I think a lot of times, you know, you, you're and it's it's a hundred percent understandable. You write what you know, and when you're young, you know, you're you're full of this kind of anticipatory, uh, anticipatory angst, and you know, where is the world going to go? And and it tends to a lot of young writers tend to do things that are very dramatic and very small. And they're not really, you know, that's not really the popular popular genre right now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, unless you can make it for a budget that you can afford to do it exactly. yourself. If you can make it yeah, for twenty, absolutely. if you make a feature for twenty, thirty thousand, which is very, very doable in today's world. Yeah, I mean, right now there's, you know, unlike twenty, thirty years ago, you know, you you can take your iPhone, you can take your Samsung, you can go out, and you can shoot a movie with that. You really can. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's all kinds of gimbals and gadgetry that you can use and. There's there's plenty of opportunity if you have the will and you have the courage to just jump into the deep end Do it, but you know, I, I work with a company right now called horror equity fund Which is focused on the horror genre uh, and for a lot of different reasons one is it's it is a fairly Low bar in terms of the entry into the industry and it's the highest return on investment uh, for narrative films and uh, you know, there's there's still, you know, we get a lot of stuff that's very, uh, it's not commercial. And, you know, that's kind it, of, it may be that's terrific, good. but it's not commercial. That's actually quite surprising because you would think almost anything in the horror genre would be commercial, but apparently it's not. What, what's an example of a non-commercial horror idea? Because, I mean, well, generally horrors, like you got a ghost story, you have a slasher film, yeah. you've got a serial killer. There, there's multiple different genres, subgenres within that, but like what's yeah, not? Yeah, no, it, really, it really has to do with the quality of the writing mm. when I talk about what, what is and isn't uh, commercially viable. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I'll give you an example. We had, we had someone who came to us who, um, whose kind of mantra was, I make really bad movies. Well, there, and, and there is that subgenre that I mean, Lloyd, Co Lloyd, Lloyd Kaufman has kind of cornered the mm -hmm. market on that without yeah. question a trauma. Yeah. So, so the, those kind of things, but, but my feeling is, you know, yes, there's a place to aim for that, but the market has become so saturated in everything that you really have to have, do something that stands out. Um, I watched a movie the other, the other day, part of a movie the other day, which was, uh, I think it was either Killer, I think it was Killer Donuts, Attack of the Killer Donuts. I, I, had, I had the producer on the show. Okay. So <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I don't, don't. Through. It's okay. It's not supposed to be gotten <laughs> through. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, then it succeeded in exactly what it was. In. But I, I, I really marveled at the fact that one, people got it done. You know, they got an actor they, in it. They got to see Thomas Howell yeah, in it. Yeah. And, and, they, and they got it into the theaters. You know? It's well, it was because I mean, I was the theater, but I got I, I don't know if it went to theaters. Or it went, it did, I'm not sure if it went theatrically, but it did go international, and he did yeah. make money with it. A lot of it actually, yeah. but the thing was that the don't the the poster mm -hmm. was so brilliant. That's why I got him on the show when I saw the poster. I'm like I have to, I have to, 
it's just like you know donuts with like teeth coming with out teeth. of a box yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's all dark it's a like very 80s Careful. style and there is a, definitely an audience for that kind of movie and it, when i saw the when and i saw the trailer it was like oh ooh. so so i mean the thing about that is and and we do look at this is that you know that film had a hook very much so yeah. You know, you look at it and you go, oh, the poster, oh, I got to see it. I got to see a movie where donuts are attacking and killing people. You know, Just what, because what it's... And then don't they don't they become giant donuts too? Isn't that I, I, the... I've, I've never personally seen the whole thing. So. I think they uh... do. I think they become donuts. I mean, it's a little bit, you know, uh, 30, 40 years ago, there was an attack of the killer tomatoes. Well, of course, that's the start, that's basically, the start of it. You know, the same kind of, it's in that same wheelhouse for sure. But the big difference was that back then there was no competition. There wasn't as much saturation of right. media and the well, films because you like didn't a, have people that said i've got a stupid idea i'm gonna go out and play although yeah you didn't have you didn't have the shark and it was and it was, and it was it was and it was also shot on film back then yeah that's right that's <laughs> right know? yeah and the expense of that has changed significantly so. 